this is the second hour of a Thayer day. <laughs> so, you know, you cannot embody your inner cadet as you do this. You're going to have to give more than that. You're graduates now, right? So we're going to try that one again. We need a little more oomph. Good morning. Good morning. All right, there you go. Fired up. Airborne. My name is Colonel Bernie Banks, and I'm the Department Head of Behavioral Sciences and Leadership here at the United States Military Academy. I'm also a proud graduate of the class of 1987. And this morning, it's our great privilege to involve you in something that we do with cadets as part of their leader development. Music. Not the thing we'd always think about when thinking in the realm of leader development, but it plays a very powerful role and serves as a metaphor for the challenges that our graduates will face. And so today, with the help of the remarkable United States Military Academy Band, each one of you is going to get the opportunity to participate in something that cadets do as part of their current cadet experience. Joining me today are Colonel Tom Donovan, Director of the William E. Simon Center for the Professional Military Ethic, West Point Class of 1986. Colonel Tony Burgess, Director of the Center for the Advancement of Leader Development and Organizational Learning here at West Point, also known as CalDAW, West Point Class of 1990. Obviously the remarkable members of the United States Military Academy Band and their commander, Lieutenant Colonel Jim Keene. So at this time, it is our great privilege to include you in an exercise we call the Core of the Core. Out of the chaos, there was order. Duty. Honor. Country. These three hallowed words dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. They are your rallying points to build courage when courage seems to fail, to regain faith when there seems to be little cause for faith, to create hope when hope becomes forlorn. They build your basic character. They mold you for your future roles as the custodians of the nation's defense. They make you strong enough to know when you are weak and brave enough to face yourself when you are afraid. They teach you to be proud and unbending in honest failure, but humble and gentle in success. To be modest so that you will remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, the meekness of true strength. And what sort of soldiers are those you are to lead? Their story is known to all of you. He belongs to history as furnishing one of the greatest examples of successful patriotism. He belongs to posterity as the instructor of future generations in the principles of liberty and freedom. He belongs to the present, to us, by his virtues and achievements. Yours is the profession of arms, the will to win, the sure knowledge that in war there is no substitute for victory. That if you lose, 
the nation will be destroyed. That the very obsession of your public service must be duty, honor, country. Today marks my final roll call with you. But I want you to know that when I cross the river, my last conscious thoughts will be of the core and the core and the core. Welcome to the United States Army greatest and oldest band here, built in 1802, formed. This is the United States Military Academy Band. How many of you are guests? Is this your first time you've ever been to West Point? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> How many of you, is this the first time you've been immersed in the inside of this United States Military Academy band here in this room. <laughs> yeah, just a lot more hands this time. And, this, and that brings us to our point. What we'd like to do is immerse you in a, uh, a new experience, give you a different perspective. And I think as you were hearing this, these uh, age-old words from the Duty on Our Country speech by General Douglas MacArthur, you, uh, you probably heard some different things, and you felt some different things from a different perspective. And that is the point of this exercise. We're going to take some of those uh, ideas, such as leadership, inspiration, and we're going to put it in an environment where we can't help but it coursing through your body. You can feel, hear, and even at higher levels, you can sense it. And that is the point, really. It is the point... Words like inspiration, we can talk about them all day, but when you can feel them, we think there's something to be learned. We're very excited that we're able to present this uh, to future classes uh, of, of the uh, Corps of Cadets, because we think that there's something in there that will assist in this team effort in educating, training, inspire these leaders. So as a team, we work together in doing this. So as you heard, this music at the very beginning, uh, there's probably some ideas that come to you of what is leadership. And the Army talks about leadership. The Army's really good at coming up with documents to define the intangible. <laughs> FMs, uh, ARs, there's, there's, there's a thousands of different ways. But doctrine uh, is pretty good in the Army. They know how to take a concept and pretty much close it off, tie a bow around it, and there it is. <laughs> And what we want to talk about here is how does the role of the conductor, how does that play into, what's, what's different about it? Maybe we can hear from one of our guests, what do you think the conductor does? What do you think my job is here when I am the conductor? What am I doing? What's, what are the things that I'm doing? Any, any, anyone? Synchronize the efforts. Synchronize efforts, absolutely. You manage it. You basically set make sure, set the tempo, figure out how fast we're going, okay? Yeah, like, hey, I'm reminding you, wake up. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Listen, Listen right. And if you see this center point right here, it involves a way that I can have two-way communication. Okay, great. Provide interpretation. Interpretation, right. More of the spiritual side from uh, what did the composer intend? What, what are we going after? What's the inspiration? What are we after here? A common uh, vision. Great, good. Well, these are all... Outstanding. As, as we were um, building this presentation, I was able to speak with Mr. Alex Gorski, the uh, newly appointed CEO of Johnson & Johnson. I wanted to learn more about his system of uh, leadership education. He has some really great models that he does, some speeches and, and presentations that he does. I wanted to learn from him. And the most interesting thing I got was that he wanted to learn what I did. 
He said, what is that thing? He said, I, I, I went to a concert and I saw the conductor up there and they're waving their arms and the, everybody's playing. It was outstanding. What exactly do you do? <laughs> and, uh, and I shared with them the, uh, the joke that every dictator has aspirations of someday being a conductor. <laughs> so as we... Uh, as, as we think about what are, the, uh, what, are, what are the leadership principles that we share in this room with a musical element, and how does that uh, mirror what is happening in the academy, I'd like to ask Colonel Donovan to come up and share what he does uh, as he is absolutely still serving to train, educate, and inspire our cadets. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Colonel Tom Donovan, the director of the William E. Simon Center for the Professional Military Ethic here at the academy. We focus on two main goals of the Academy experience and the Academy's mission at West Point. First of all, developing leaders of character. We cooperate with many of the academic departments, the intercollegiate athletics, sports programs, the tackles, tackle officers, and ensuring that the cadets get the best possible experience in developing their character at the Academy. One of the main way, ways we do that is through our guest lecture program, where we bring notable individuals, either from the Army or the military, or from other walks of life here in America, who have demonstrated character, competence, leadership, often in trying circumstances, and proven themselves to be wonderful leaders, to come talk to cadets and inspire them. I'd like to show a short video of Buddy Buca, class of 1965, graduate of West Point, awarded the Medal of Honor for his leadership in a very difficult battle in Vietnam. He spoke last summer at Cadet Basic Training to the class of 2016 about leadership and character and what it means to him, not only in the past, but even in the present. This is about producing leaders. No matter what uniform or clothing you wear, forever, when you graduate from here, you are expected to lead not only your company, as in military, your company, as in civilian, your community, your family, they will look to you for leadership if you learn about leadership and accept a way of life of honor. A second major goal that we focus on in our programs in the Simon Center is the cadet's understanding of the professional military ethic. What does it mean to be a military officer in today's world and in what we project to be the future world? And what are the requirements to successfully lead people? Duty, honor, country. Academy's motto, of course, is a big part of that, but also competence, character, leadership, willingness to understand the environment out there and to lead soldiers. As part of that, we also bring in guest lecturers. We also bring in, uh, bring all the yearling cadets each year to the cemetery for a program called Inspiration to Serve, in which we bring 16 individuals to talk to the cadets at grave sites of notable graduates of individuals that are buried there about their lives, what these individuals did to contribute not only to the nation, but maybe to their families or to other aspects of American life. <clears throat> Through dynamic speakers, such as you see in the pictures here today, or in the video, and through just involved leadership in various aspects of the Academy, the Simon Center is able to pro provide some quality, over-the-top additional instruction and assistance to <coughs> other cadets so that they understand what is expected of them and we can inspire them to be the best that they can be. I'd like to turn back over to our director. Mm -hmm. so, so how does that manifest and how do we, um, what we're talking about here, and really I think the word that kept, he kept going to was inspiration. It was education, but inspiration of people who have gone through some uh, incredible uh, things in their careers and in their lives, they can share those experiences. And we have uh, rings. So what does that inspire to you? Anyone? Okay. It's the Olympics, right? The Olympic <coughs> rings. Cooperation. Right. Five continents coming together on a field of friendly strife, telling a story of depth. Why do we like the Olympics? going to the inspiration, the point. These are stories of individuals trying to do their best. We, we uh, hold those uh, 
those images in our mind with Usain Bolt going across the finish line, breaking the world's record. It's inspirational. I mean, I can't imagine a program that can get me interested in curling. <laughs> but I am totally like focused on it. I'm like, you know, Denmark is going to get Sweden tonight and I, I can't make rehearsal. <laughs> those stories at different levels. Not only the person that built the bobsled, but the countries and where the nation uh, that's hosting the games, why that happened and who's investing in it, and the stories of the unlikely winner. All those things are captured and we like to call it a part of on the same sheet of music. You hear the army doing this. They pick this up. They say, we got to all be on the same sheet of music here. I've heard this in amazing places in the Army. <laughs> and if you look in front of you there, you'll see that the different instruments, they, they all hold different types of instruments. Some are made of wood, brass, uh, small size, big. And they all have, if you see, a different piece of music. They each have their own lanes. They have their own expertise, their own perspective. And that perspective, in this case, is deep with this organization. Uh, this band is truly world class. Uh, they've been practicing since they were this big and haven't ever stopped. And they absolutely focus on excellence. And yet, they're focused on one thing. What I'm focused on up here is what I would call the same sheet of music, but it's called the score. It's the master plan. I'm the guy that doesn't make any noise. My job is just to listen. Conductors, uh, I wish I could talk more with uh, Mr. Gorski. We don't really do much at all. I don't know what we do. It was hard to answer that question. <laughs> what do you do as a leader of the group? I don't know. Not really sure. I guess I make, yeah, I don't know. And yet, uh, there is a critical element of ensuring that inspiration, the ultimate goal, is always the purpose. And if there is one, you'll see this here. So here we go, let's hear, let's break this down a little bit so we can hear some of the different components. Each of the stories being told, each of the perspectives, I think you'll be surprised at what you'll learn. <laughs> trumpet sound, right? It's kind of that thing we remember about the Olympic fanfare and theme. That's the theme right there. There it is. Is that fanfare that we, when we turn on the TV, we get all excited and ready to watch curling. <laughs> Next. Now this is kind of a different story over here. <coughs> Dissonance. Dissonance resolved. Okay, next. Bell part.
A very simple story. Hard to execute. Anyone want to try that out? <laughs> you want to take, huh? No takers? OK, next. And you'll see why the joke goes that uh, don't look at the brass because it only encourages them. I once went to an opera, and, uh, and I was sitting in the back, and I looked at uh, the percussion part to, uh, it was uh, Das Rheingold. And <laughs> there's literally half hour where there's just nothing. <laughs> they don't have a thing, but all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere, bam. Interesting life. See if you can identify this one, how long it takes. <laughs> There's a story there. So We've heard each of these pieces telling their own story from their own perspectives, all a part of a team to tell a story, to get together and basically make you feel all those things that are embodied in those five rings and the experience itself. Let's just hear this one sheet of music. Maybe you'll gain a new perspective. some different things. What did you hear from your different perspectives? Anything particularly strike you? Not yet? Well, good. I can see we don't have quite enough involvement yet. <laughs> so we're going to kind of ensure that you feel a part of this. We want you to be uh, welcomed. And how we'll do that is I want you to get up and change to a different seat. We're now going to immerse you. We, we, we're going to immerse you in the hot seat. So um, I never ask for volunteers because guess what happens with an experienced group? No one volunteers. <laughs> you've already done that in different ways, and you've learned how that works. But I'm going to ask you to come up and help us, sir, right now. And he is going to be immersed in the hot seat. He is now going to be our conductor. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I have a gig. And I'll be back in a while. It's, as long as it's Led Zeppelin, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what we have, the scenario here, is you have a piece of music in front of you that has two notes. It, it's actually two chords. And those, each of uh, our musicians has in front of them, you can see here, take a look and see what they have in front of them. Uh, they have two notes that they play. Yeah. So. This one and this one. They're just two notes. Normally, there's a lot of information that is given on this sheet of music, telling you how short, how loud, everything. But in this case, there, there's just notes. There's not even a time signature. So two notes. there it is. Okay. So uh, let's see what you do. You want to do a dry run? Sure. Would you, what, you, what would you like? Two notes. OK. Here are the two chords that, that they'll play. The first chord sounds like this. So he did a great thing right now. He delegated. You see that? <laughs> he said, you're so smart, why don't you do it? You just have to go back and forth between the two notes. I don't know. 
Uh, it's ambiguous, uh, but it is a difficult problem if you make it difficult. Let's see what happens. <laughs> a lot of leaders will not ask a question when given authority. He did. He asked for clarity, especially new leaders. What they will do is go, I got this. And they go in the middle of the room and everyone is, especially in an organization like this band, highly qualified soldiers. They go, all right, what's the direction? How long does it take for them to know that the leader knows what they're doing? Hmm. Wish I knew which hand you were going to pay attention to. <laughs> okay, ready? You can see why every dictator aspires to be a conductor, right? <laughs> I watch you. I think your job is to glare at the ones that aren't doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was your experience? Help, help give us a little, what were you thinking? What were the things that went through your mind? And I was thinking about how to get them to repeat a note. Right. Like bum, bum, yeah. bum. Right. But, but I didn't know how to communicate that. What, what I experienced was everybody looking at me saying, what, what are you trying to communicate? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two-way street. All right. So I'm going to just give him something that I'll call vision. And let's see what happens different. So he's got the vision, he's got the plan. <laughs> okay, so what I talked to him about was, I said, how about a sunrise and a sunset? And, and you heard it, right? If you, if you knew what it was, then that's, it was kind of happening. So what did, what, let's, let's hear around the room. What did, uh, any other comments about what you got from his leadership style and what, anything? Give us some. Give me some feedback, please. I'm glad he's up there, not me. Okay. <laughs> sir, you're next. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yes, sir. The team always makes a leader look better. Yes, you see that team was totally dedicated, right on the edge of their seats, ready to do anything they could for that leader not to fail. He projects confidence. Yes, absolutely. He's been in leadership before. Okay? So, some of the things that are interesting is a new leader will t generally want to make rules. Try to figure out, well, what's, what are they used to, and how do I communicate this first chord and the second chord? And they're afraid to go directly to the inspiration. They're afraid to go directly to the guts of what it's all about. Because they figure, well, I don't know what. But and the fact is that he does know, all of us. You know Led Zeppelin. <laughs> you know how that makes you feel. Yep. So conduct them like Led Zeppelin makes you feel. <laughs> I mean, just drop, drop everything, drop everything and conduct, you, and you have the parameters, I'm sorry, of these two chords, but it's the same energy. Go. Hey, hey, what can I say? It's a little bit deeper here. Yeah. <laughs> Dazed and confused, I think it'd be the title of this one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. So that's definitely the hot seat. Colonel Burgess, 
and his team knows quite a bit about this subject. If you weren't already fired up to be here, I mean, that, that was just awesome. <laughs> and I think you established just a real connection with the group. You know, there was some, it, it resonated with them, something about you, your, your aura, that I think connected well. And even if they didn't know exactly what you were trying to get them to do, they really wanted to. It had and, to be a collaborative effort. I didn't know what it was. It was very doing. cool. But you're lucky, his strength would be he wanted to negotiate each of their contracts with them. But, or, or, <laughs> <laughs> that could undermine trust later. <laughs> For now, you're good. Good morning, my name is Colonel Tony Burgess, and 13 years ago, coming out of company command in the 25th Infantry Division, I was assigned to West Point to be a tactical officer. And during that year-long master's degree program, embedded in BSNL, a group of us, class of 90 and 91 guys, came together and created companycommand.com. This is an online community to connect company commanders across the Army. West Point with leadership and support from some of you in the room today, thank you, established a Center for the Advancement of Leader Development and Organizational Learning to support this work, to be a catalyst for that peer-to-peer -peer leader development and learning, both for Army leaders as well as for cadets, who through the forums, for the first time, gain access to this vibrant, ongoing conversation about the profession that they're preparing to enter. So pretty cool. One of a number of exciting innovations that has emerged in our work is the Leader Challenge Project. We believe that you learn to lead most when you're put into tough, challenging experiences where you're out of your comfort zone, not unlike what you experience being thrust into this hot seat conducting the music. On video, we asked leaders around the Army to describe a hard-hitting, dilemma type of a challenging experience that they've had. We use storytelling as the vehicle to bring cadets into those tough situations, both in a cutting edge online environment, as well as in a dynamic, high energy, face-to-face -face engagement. Let me give you an example, a leader challenge. Imagine you're in Afghanistan, your name is Lieutenant Clark. You're an infantry company executive officer. Today, you're leading the patrol. Your company commander is back on the outpost. You're in command, the acting commander on the mission. Things go well, till late in the day, as you're moving back towards the outpost, you're egressing past a village. As you do, you come under heavy fire. The bullets are flying. RPGs are exploding around you. Your heart is racing. Your first sergeant begins to take charge. He's charismatic, highly experienced, super aggressive. And he begins directing his NCOs to break contact with the enemy and bound back in the direction of the, of the outpost. Your company commander, on the other hand, is on the radio with you, directing you to close with the enemy, close with and destroy the enemy. So what are you going to do? Are you going to listen to the commander directing you to close with the enemy? Or are you going to go with what's already happening, the first arm breaking contact? <clears throat> And not only what are you going to do, but how? How are you going to do it? That is a leader challenge. In partnership with the Simon Center, this year we're finishing up, right now, we're finishing up our second full year of leader challenges. As it stands, cadets gather in small groups five times a year and are immersed into a real life challenge of a leader. Not a hypothetical made up scenario, but a real life situation filled with ambiguity and discomfort and which puts them in the hot seat and forces them to take on different perspectives. The feedback has been overwhelmingly positive from cadets, from faculty mentors who are involved in each small group, from 50 year affiliates who come back and are involved, as well as army leaders who are beginning to tap into and leverage this for their own development in units and schoolhouses in the army like Fort Benning where we'll be at in a week and a half. Although there are some uncertainties in our way ahead, I am positive, I'm inspired, and I'm energized because we have a proven idea that together we can take forward and quite possibly, I believe, transform the way that Army leaders learn and develop along the way. Thank you very much. That's like church. That makes me want to play you all a song, shall we?
so you, some of you heard that song before. <laughs> mean anything? Have any meaning for you? Army's, one of the Army's oldest songs, West Point's oldest song, played by the Army's oldest band right here that you're in the middle of. Uh, it's a great meaning, right? Everybody liked it. It's pretty. So I know the next thing we should do. Change it. That's what we do, right? Especially in the Army. We are either changing or reacting to the change we just made. <laughs> but why do we do that? Why do we adjust the product? Why do we, uh, why, what's the need for innovation? Maintain relevance. What does that mean? But there's a dilemma in innovation where we want to, obviously what she's saying is dead on, but there's a, there are some things we want to preserve, isn't it? Want to preserve a military uh, feel maybe? Let's turn it into a march then. <laughs> That's what the army would do to it, right? <laughs> Still Benny Havens. Pretty cool, right? Definitely Army. <laughs> Didn't lose any of the integrity. But there's a, the, some of the storytelling kind of a little different. I can't drink to that quite the same way. Not quite as sad. <laughs> so why, why, would a, why would I want to innovate? I want to hear more from, uh, more from you all. What do you have? Why would I want to change things? I'll, I'll just pitch to you that our cadets in class of 2016 were born in 1994, 1995. They were born in 1994, 1995. Their reality is a little different than anyone who came before them. <laughs> and their taste in music is a little different. I always think that we should take a techno beat behind this thing and just let it fly. And put, you know, lights and... Right? Sure. Why would we want to innovate? Let's just hear, hear this. This is a new setting. This is another way of looking at it. And I'm going to ask you to participate. So when I cue you, do your thing. <laughs> Innovation can still be acceptable, can't it? So um, a graduate of West Point, Mr. Joe DePinto, had the guts to change his perspective to find out what made his company tick. He was trying to figure out why this one store, he went an undercover boss, the TV show. Yeah, he messed up, you know, you'll see, it's pretty wild. 
and he learned something. He was trying to figure out why this one place sold so much coffee. Had had to put a. This one could be changed. Gotta take the other one out first. And here he is, right? Hey, where you been? Oops. Danny. Hey, I need French vanilla regular. Where is he? Taking care of the coffee business at the store is really challenging. And the pace of it. You know, there's a lot of interaction with customers. You got to keep the coffee right. It's a lot of work. Whoa, what's going on here? How did that happen? Oh my. <laughs> so he uh, he humbled himself to go in the trenches to figure out how it's done, and he learned very quickly the the secret. The secret was, in this particular case, as simple as one employee, Danny, this lady, been there for 18 years, and she knew how to do the coffee business. She also knew some other things. She knew how to build relationships. She knew how to build mutual trust. And she would have coffee with sugar and everything ready, and she'd say, yes, sir, how's everything going? How are your kids? And they'd line up outside to buy the coffee. He found that his most precious resource was his people. So a very uh, insightful lesson was learned here. And we talked about it just a little bit. And he was able to say, yeah, it was kind of mind blowing. We, we had committees uh, trying to redesign coffee cups. We had people uh, trying to figure out what the blend was right. And it wasn't about that. That's not what sold the coffee. So uh, there's a lot of lessons to be, to be learned. Uh, none that I'm qualified to teach. But hopefully, you all have enjoyed yourself today. And we thank you very much. I'm going to turn to uh, my teammate here, Colonel Banks, if you could give us some closing remarks, sir. So who here loves music? Oh. All right. Wow, this is the most enthusiastic response we've gotten yet. <laughs> Normally, groups sit there and do just like cadets, just kind of <laughs> this much. Don't really want to put yourself out there, but at the same time, want to show that you're somewhat engaged. So. <laughs> Here we have a lot of hands. All right, so I think I saw every hand. And I know we have members of the Glee Club that are in here. So one would have to believe that you love music. Now, I remember your face from last night. You're a handsome man. So why do you love music? It inspires me. It gives me uh, a feeling of euphoria. Much like drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to be illegal. They get a lot cheaper. Absolutely. We're all at that age. So, a sense of euphoria. What else? What is it about music that draws you to it? Well, the camaraderie, the, uh, the feeling of being part of an organization that, uh, that, that makes you feel good. So it can galvanize your commitment to working in concert with others. Absolutely. Other thoughts? Express non-verbally. Express non-verbally. So the ability to tell a story without actually having to say <coughs> the words. Now, I know I've got a classmate back. Kiko, yes, what do you love about music? Dancing. Dancing. <laughs> so the ability to express oneself through physical action. Kermit reinforces history. Reinforces history. Mm. It takes us back in time. It helps us to understand why we do the things we do. All great reasons, sir. It energizes both sides of your brain, the thinking part and the feeling part, all together. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of things. So music has the ability to transform us, to take us from where we're currently at to another place. And one of the reasons we do this exercise with cadets is to help them understand what makes West Point unique and to understand what it is to be a leader. The thing that makes West Point unique is that it's designed to be a transformation. If you come out of West Point after four years, fundamentally the same person, we failed as an institution. This institution exists to imbue an identity in each one of its graduates. For those of you who know me, I'm constantly saying there's a difference between a West Point graduate and a West Pointer. A West Point graduate is somebody who came here, passed all the courses, did what was required of them, but never really bought in to our core values and to this understanding that they had to live their lives above the common level of life. A West Pointer is the embodiment 
of those seven core values and will seek to live them every single day of their life, regardless of what they're doing. So today, you've been part of a small example of the innovations that take place here at West Point to get cadets to understand the importance of transforming who they are. Not because it's about them, but because it's about those that they will have the privilege of leading. Countless exercises like this are part of the experience for cadets. But in order to create those experiences, it takes individuals like you committed to what we do on a daily basis. So thank you for all your support over the years. Thank you for your enduring support to the Association of Graduates, West Point, and the nation. Without you, this beautiful experiment would come to an end. And so on behalf of the Department of Behavioral Sciences and Leadership, the William E. Simon Center for the Professional Military Ethic, the Center for the Advancement of Leader Development and Organizational Learning, and the remarkable United States Military Academy Band, we'd like to say, enjoy your day, stay committed, and go Army. Now, we're going to leave you with one final piece of music. And it's our great hope that it does transform you in some small way. Thank you.